Back in the first hour I, of this program, I laid out my argument for why the Postal Service, why we should rewrite the laws regulating the Postal Service and allow them to offer secure encrypted email services. And the argument, I think, boils down very, very simply. When you make a deal with a private corporation, you are signing a contract. And if that corporation doesn't, first of all, the, that contract is not going to be written between you and that corporation. You're not going to have any say in the writing of the corporation. The corporation and their lawyers write the contract, and they do it in a way that will maximize the profits and benefits to the corporation and screw you, right? I mean, it is, they'll only give you what is absolutely minimally necessary to get you on board, number one. And so, because the, their goal is not to serve the public, it's to make money. If they make the money serving the public, fine, but, you know, it's to make money. And number two, that... On the other hand, when you send mail, first-class mail right now, because of the way the federal law is written, if somebody opens that mail between the time that you put it in the mailbox and the time that the person on the other end gets it, they've committed a federal crime. So there's already a precedent for the post office delivering things with integrity, with Fourth Amendment integrity, unless they have a warrant. They can't open it. So the post office could easily do the same thing electronically. They could give you an electronic envelope. You drop your email into it. It automatically encrypts. It gets sent to somebody on the other end, and they automatically decrypt it. They take it out of the envelope. Nobody opens it along the way. And not only would we not write the contract with a for-profit corporation, we'd be writing the contract through our elected representatives with ourselves and with the one agency in our lives that, at the very least, is supposed to serve us as its first goal rather than serve profits for big corporations. So that's my argument. Tim Cavanaugh is on the line, executive editor with The Daily Caller, the website dailycaller.com. And, Tim, I, I just presented this. Uh, you know, you, me, God, and all our viewers and listeners got to hear it. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I think... Uh, you know, I, I'm not really sure what's the news here because, uh, I mean, Google has come out and said it, you know, in a way that obviously if you're trying to sell a company to the public, you're not going to be, uh, you know, highlighting this stuff. But said what I, I can't imagine anybody who's been using Gmail uh, hasn't realized that when you say certain things in an email, you'll see certain ads come up. And clearly there is some... Uh, entity of some sort, I don't know what, whether to call it intelligence or not, uh, that's, you know, looking at that and figuring out how do we, how can we market to this person. Uh, I, I know, uh, you know, I, I sympathize in possibly with where you're thinking in terms of the contract, because we all have the ser- terms of service that we have to click on and who has the time to read it all. And, it, you know, it's really voluminous and I, obviously it's all, you know, done so that in any uh, coin toss, the coin goes to the company and not to the customer. Right, and, and for the record, right. by the way, this that, is not... That's why this, you're legally obligated to read it and sign it. Or at right, least this is... The, and, and let's say, this, this is just, you know, to, to take Google out of the equation. You and I are not sitting here bashing Google. The same is true of AOL Mail, the same is true of Hotmail, the same is true of Yahoo Mail. Right. It's, the, it's true of pretty much any for-profit email provider. Right. Uh, yeah, and I... You know, one thing you have to keep in mind is that Google Mail is something you don't pay for. Uh, so, you know, there are, uh, I believe, you'll love this. There's mail at RonaldReagan.com. Right? Somebody got the, is using the RonaldReagan.com domain mm-hmm. to use uh, super encrypted, to give you super encrypted email. You pay for the service, and you can then, uh, you know, send and, and receive all right. the email you wish. But here's the one problem with that, Tim. On your end, it will remain private. Right, but here's the one problem with that. And, and, and you know, there were two companies that Ed Snowden was using, and, uh, and they both just committed suicide. Rather than turn their servers over to the, over to the FBI, they, they shut down their companies and they destroyed all their data. And, um, you know, that, that's doing the honorable thing. But the fact of the matter is either one of those two companies could just as easily have said, and if they were very large and very profitable, and particularly a public company, they probably would have done it this way, would have said, okay, we're just going to bankrupt that division of our company. And in the bankruptcy process, all the information on those servers becomes an asset of the creditors. It gets sold, and now all your encrypted emails are public knowledge, right. or, or at least can be sold. If it was the Postal Service, that would never happen. And if it was the postal service, I mean, right now, if if you know, if you're if somebody at Gmail reads one of your emails and decides to post it over on the National Enquirer, 
uh, you, you know, you're basically you have a terms of service disagreement. You have a lawsuit against them. Yeah, I'm but if it's somebody at the post, post office, service, they, they go to jail. Uh, uh, Miss Manners, uh, Judith Martin, if you remember mm-hmm. uh, Miss Manners from way back, uh, she used to have a she, or she did a Q and A or something like that on, uh, on uh, you know back when they called it cyber uh, politeness or cyber manners. Right. Yes. Uh, and one of her points was you should treat an email uh, uh, to, uh, you should expect about as much privacy as you would with a postcard. And you and I are old enough to remember postcards. Uh, I think that, you know, that's why, uh, yeah, this is a much, much, you know, infinitely more convenient uh, service that you're getting for free as opposed to the Postal Service. Right. And that, uh, you know, you, you also, you're paying for that with a lower expectation of privacy. And I, you know, what we're talking about with the FBI seizing stuff I think the FBI could easily seize anything it wanted from Google, right? Because they can always say, well, you're in business, you're in business to turn a profit, and therefore we have a bazillion other agencies that can look into everything you're doing and turn over every nook and cranny. And uh, so, you know, that, if we're going to talk about the security against the government, mm. that's a different issue than I thought what I thought we were talking about now, which is this Google announcement about who can, you know, what they're doing with sure. email. Well, I think I think the Google's announcement has has like you as you pointed out, Tim has uh, has validated for everybody what they always suspected all along, which is that these big corporations might not be treating their information with the delicacy and privacy that they had hoped for. My solution is to you know give new life to the post office by saying that they can go into the business of secure encrypted email. What's wrong with that? Yeah, I've, I don't know. I, I it hadn't occurred to me. I mean, I don't know why are we looking to give new life to the postal service? It's well, it was, you know, it's Ben Franklin's invention. It's kind of a cool thing. It's mentioned in the Constitution, and I think and the I, communication I is. Their, they, I mean, they'll retain their mail, their 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 monopoly on mailed letters for mm-hmm. as long as. Not if Rand Paul has anything to say about it. What's that? Not if Rand Paul has anything to say about it. I think there's I, something I, to be I, said. I find it unlikely that the U.S. Postal Service is going to be completely rolled back at any point. I mean, it'll no, always that... exist in some vestigial manner to cover whatever vestiges of the old mail system existed. No, they'll just, they'll just uh, do it the to the point that they get rid of the, the unions. The you could see is, is to, to monopolize email the way you're talking No, about. I'm not talking about monopoly. Well, this this would be a high end. This would be a premium is. service. Postal service is a monopoly. Yeah, but I'm not talking about an, a monopoly on email. I'm, I'm saying allow them to offer a premium service for a fee. And and yeah, no, I, well, I would much probably, rather buy that from a government agency. Stopping them? I mean, I don't think. Yes, the law stops them. them from doing this. They cannot get in the business of doing email right now. Who? What? The U.S. Postal Service can't get in the business of doing. I thought That's they tried correct. several times. There was, I no. remember several efforts from USPS to offer email service, and none of them ever really took well, off. Senator Sanders is proposing a piece of legislation that would allow them to, and right now. My understanding is they're blocked by by law. But it might be a recent law, but they're blocked by law from expanding the services that they offer. That might be part of this postal reform in 2006 that required hmm. them to set aside five billion a year. Well, you, know, I, for, you know what? I, I have no uh, no beef with that. I, uh, you know, I I'm, I agree. The postal services in the con- you know the the Constitution says uh, establish a postal service. It doesn't say maintain one yeah. forever. But uh, you know, uh, but I think I'm with I think I that's no problem, communications no is our infrastructure. Wanted, USPS wants to offer that as a for-fee service, as other people do. Like I said, I mentioned right. before, a private email provider who is doing the same thing. Right, RonaldReady.com. That competition, great. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just saying that I think that communications, mail communication, is part of our infrastructure. It's an infrastructure that businesses use, that individuals use, and it should be an inexpensive part of our infrastructure to help make us more competitive in the world. But anyhow, it's Tim Cavanaugh, executive editor with The Daily Caller, dailycaller.com. Thanks, Tim. Thanks a lot. Great talking to you.